questioning the fabric of Nigeria's textile industry. Local Adira makers petition for a more vibrant manufacturing sector and less dependence of foreign fabrics. Is it a mosque or a church? In Niger, a community of Muslims and Christians has been worshipping in the same compound for over 60 years. An experimental treatment for Ebola. Will it help contain Congo's second outbreak this year? Africa 54 starts right now. Hello and welcome to Africa 54. I'm Jocker Rogers at Channel Television here in Lagos. And I'm joined by Vincent McCorry at The Voice of America in Washington. Well, thanks a lot. I'm Vincent McCorry at our global headquarters in Washington, D.C. Happy to be with you again for another edition of Africa 54. Let's start off with a look at the textile manufacturing sector in Nigeria. Joker Rogers in Lagos brings you that story. That's right. Makers of the locally designed textile, popularly known as Adire, in Abeokuta, the Ogun State capital, are appealing to the federal government to revive the country's textile industry Owing to their dependence on foreign fabrics and the attendant high cost, they desire a more productive approach to growing their businesses, which continue to serve as a source of income for families and has become a tourist attraction. Young men adding finishing touches to yards of colorful Adire after several production stages. Adire, the Yoruba translation for tie and dye, is an age-long practice of creating intricate designs on fabrics common amongst the Egba tribe of Abeokuta in Ogun State. It all begins with a plain or slightly designed piece of cloth, put through various stages including soaking in a hot or cold mixture of dye and soda, drying, printing, sewing and packaging. Then it's ready for sale. Adire making spans decades until date is being handed down from generation to generation. Sometimes entire families, both young and old, are involved in the business. It continues to provide jobs and profitable business. It's a uh, division of labor. This aspect has a minimum of, let's say, 500 people. What that means? Everything totally, we are dealing with almost 1 million people. It's an employee business. Adire has been. A good source of income. I once worked, and what I earn in a month, I think, is what what some people earn more than what some people earn in a month. So it's okay. It's I'm being able to feed my family and be myself. Back in the 1980s, the textile industry was a vibrant sector of the Nigerian economy, with several textile companies producing all sorts of fabrics. But with the abysmal decline of the industry, locally made fabrics are hard to come by, and the result is high cost of imported material. The idea makers say this is the biggest challenge they face. Most companies are not working very well because we have the type of material we used to do our own clothes, 100% cotton, like guinea, like any other fabric that is 100% cotton. That will come out fine in our product. For anyone that is not have 100% cotton, it won't come out well. We are appealing to government to make sure all the uh, for a factory are doing 100% cotton that we will be able to go there and buy it used for our product. According to the Ogun State Government, there are plans in place to assist those in the trade with funds in order to expand export within and outside the country. One of the plans is funding them because the bane of the problem is funding. And that's why we give them loan, BOI loan of um, single digits, 7%. And the deformed cooperatives, I can tell you that presently over 200 people, because they have over, I think about 50 cooperatives under this at the at Toku, they have and they have their treasurer there. So it has actually created that thing for them, and that is the plan we have for them. The state government is also constructing an Adire Mall to put some structure in trade, which will also serve as a tourist attraction to lovers of African print and attires. Well, clearly there's a need to harness available resources to generate revenue and one way is by exporting more than importing. Now joining us now to talk about increasing export earnings, especially from non-oil commodities, is the chairman, export group of the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Bamidele Ayemibo. Thank you for joining us 
on Africa 54. Thank you very much. Thank now, you know, let's take a look at all these. According to the Central Bank of Nigeria, let me just, you know, get you the details. Nigeria's balance of payment has significantly risen this year. But we know that the bulk of the earnings comes from crude oil. We yeah. all know that. So, you know, how can we harness, you know, potential export earnings from non, uh, the non-crude oil sector? I, I think you are waking up to that reality. Um, the report from the quarter one report of NBS this year showed that uh, non-oil grew from usual 4 to 5 percent of the total export earning for the quarter till around, around 11 to 12 percent. And that was a massive leap actually we actually end in the quarter one of this year what we usually will end in a year about 577 billion naira. so i think we're waking up to that reality the only concern i have is the fact that i'm not sure is as a result of any deliberate policy of the government but rather the response of the manufacturer who are the major exporter in that quarter to the issue they had during the recession so how can we get the you know deliberate response from the government that is desperately needed because before now, we know that before you know, crude oil was discovered, Nigeria exported um, palm oil produce, ground nuts, and various other crash crops, you know, rubber. How do we get back to, in, that, mode. to that you know, mode? Now, we need deliberate export policy. I remember then when Wuba came in, um, he set up a committee that chaired by the chairman of Boeing, who reported directly to him, and mainly to drive export from the U.S. because they discover they create a lot of job for every $1 billion um, product export of the U.S. So we need a deliberate policy. I know for a fact, and I guess the promotion council came up with what they call the zero oil plan. And that has been on the table in the presidency from what I heard for some time now. We're expecting to be launched by the president, but that was not, that's not been done. And the council had to begin to move from one state to the other, trying to get each state to, to rise up to that occasion. Just the way government is directly driving a Greek. We need to do the same for non-oil. I mean, President launching a program. So in, in doing this, let's look at the you know, ease of doing business that okay. you know, has been you know, on the table and has been backed by the President, the president <laughs> too, for now. Uh, how is it easy is it for someone you know, to be able to export? To be able, what if I had, you know, I wanted a second stream of income and I wanted to go to, to the exporting business? How easy is, is it for me to start this? On the paper, based on the report of World Bank, the ranking went up. But, I mean, on the um, trade across border, the major issue we are having right now, they've done a number of things around documentation, I must give it to the Secretariat, on, those, on the Pebec people. But the major issue that has not made their work to really see the light of the day, for people to appreciate what they've done in the trading across border, is the issue in Apapa. Right. Immediately, I, I'm hoping what uh, Adizad said, that the... Uh, the the person heading the, the MPA lady, if that happened, September, we're able to finish, and the, 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 the tempo from the manufacturing continue on top of export, then we'll probably be able to, probably we'll be getting towards what you're asking and harnessing the potential in that sector. But that's not the real solution. Okay. The real solution is to do rail. Right. If you fix that road, and those trucks keep moving on that road, over time that road will depreciate again, and we don't have a good maintenance culture. Yeah. So if you do rail, so that they are heavy duty, my word, in product, moving out of the port. If they are moved on rail out of Lagos, like we are doing in Lekki, deep sea port. Now, I hope we are planning rail for that place because that's the issue we had here. Because before we know it, all the road in that, on that axis are going to have issue when they finish that port and all the trucks are moving on the road with all the heavy load <laughs> right. inside the truck. Thank you for your thoughts on that, Bamidele. Right. Thank you for joining us in Africa 54 today. Thank you very much. Well, we want to know what you think about Africa 54 and the stories we cover. Join the conversation on Facebook. The address is Africa 54. Check out our headlines 24-7 at voaafrica.com. Coming up, humanitarian aid for farmers and herdsmen in Adamawa State. That story after the break. <laughs>